In this video, I would like to take another and closer look at Options Viewer programs. We did already consider Options Viewer programs in the video about the basic setup of x Forensics as such. In that first video though, the core focus in this screen was on the paths for the viewer libraries and the M player and the Tesseract, with the goal of course to get a copy of x Forensics that has the full functionality of all of those components available. This time I would like to take a closer look at some of the other options provided, specifically trying to focus on things you might see or how you might see them depending on those settings. Starting with the gallery options in the lower left hand corner. Now as you can see Amongst the options available is the ability to determine how large the gallery thumbnail should be. Now if you change this option, in other words, you simply set a different preferred thumbnail size. When I click OK, it does not appear to have had any immediate effect because the gallery first needs to be forced to rebuild, which is easiest achieved by leaving it and restarting it. And then you can see the gallery does indeed show up with larger tiles. So if you're unhappy with the gallery tile size as such, options, viewer programs and the thumbnail size in there can help you with that. It also offers the ability to adjust the colors in those thumbnails. If I choose this option and click OK, if I now rebuild the gallery, the pictures show in grayscale. If I do the same thing again with options, view programs and a half checked adjust colors, then the gallery will on next attempt rebuild in distorted colors. The goal of this is to allow a less impactful visual appearance, in particular of abuse or other images showing disturbing scenes and images. Also in the options viewer programs is the ability to decide whether non-picture files should be represented as thumbnails too. In other words, whether the gallery is even supposed to try displaying not just pictures, but for example, documents and spreadsheets and the like in a gallery preview as well. The additional options in here regarding the decoding text in files, for example, most significantly affect the search. With the option to convert binary storage of numbers or dates in spreadsheets to text, x Forensics gains the ability to search for numbers or dates entered as search terms in their native form, meaning that if a spreadsheet stored a date, it would do so internally in raw binary form. This conversion from the binary form to its, if you prefer, human readable form would of course also make it searchable by way of entering actual numbers or dates as search terms. If you do not, however, intend to run search terms that consist of numbers or dates, then of course you would benefit from unticking that option altogether because as the warning next to the box says, this will of course make the processing of those files substantially slower, which of course would not be beneficial in any way if your search terms didn't require dates or numbers to begin with. Also in here is the ability to instruct x Forensics to store the decoded text of such files. That does not just affect the binary storage of numbers or dates, because as you can see, that option is independent of that. It affects the generic, as mentioned in the title, decoding of text in files, which again happens for search purposes. In this case, in a much more fundamental way, namely to make the text in those documents searchable in the first place. But if we store the decoded text, then of course that doesn't have to be repeated every time, say, another search is run or indeed the search hits are shown with context in the actual search result listing in x Forensics. This option also applies to text that was found not by decoding as such, but by OCR. So if the OCR feature is active and if the OCR has in fact been applied to a file during a search, 
then this option will also mean that it doesn't have to be reapplied just to gain that text again for the purposes of, for example, showing a search hit in context or indeed displaying the text outright when attempting to do a raw text view. The other option in here that is worth noting is in the lower right hand corner you can determine a list of file types for which x Forensics shall attempt using the actual Windows standard program. When it says associated program for viewing, it basically means the program set in your Windows system as the default for the file type in question. The listing as it stands effectively, of course, basically means sound files would be subject to that, but you could, of course, amend this to include other file types as well. The flip side, of course, would then be that every time you do try to view a file like that, it will in fact be exported out into your temp directory and then opened via Windows. For those files that are of a video nature, x Forensics will automatically employ the preferred video player, which unlike the M player in the box above, does not in fact have to be M player. Your preferred video player can be set to any video playing application your system has on offer.